piles of debit cards, piles of fucking, you know, gift cards. They had all the, would you call it, the swag? Yeah, yeah. They had their apartment full of swag. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, and that, and that's how he went to jail. My little brother went to jail. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I got John Boziak here, and we're going to be doing a uh, a, a video on um, the reemergence of I like reemergence. So the reemergence of the the skimmer machines where they put them on like ATMs and they put them in uh, gas stations and they put them on you know the skimmer machines. They used to be really popular and then they kind of went out of vogue and uh, out of fashion and and then they um, and now they're making a comeback. And so we're going to be talking about that and we're going to talk about just different types of credit card scams that are uh, you know risky and ones that are less risky and just kind of like the different the different types of um uh, approaches to doing credit card scams which are all wrong and i feel really bad about uh anybody about you know about just you know victims and the whole thing i feel bad about and so that's for the algorithm all right and so check this out I was no good at it That's before. so blatantly phony and fake. Like, um, I would lose all of my subscribers if I were to do all my intros with That's such what fucking... That's do. It's not phony. But that's what you do. You do because you get them excited and you got to tell them about what's yeah, going on and yeah, you got to be upbeat. We have drastically different uh, subscriber bases. But that's the difference bases, between somebody Matt. who drinks coffee all day long and someone yeah. who's, get, who's constantly stoned. Yeah, exactly. It's a totally it's, different... There we are. Yeah, and therein yeah. lies the difference in our subscriber base. It's fine. Yeah. It takes all kinds. It takes right, all kinds. Right, yeah. I'm more, you know... I like to laid back and I like to ease into things with a kind of a slow monotone to my voice. Uh, kind of ease my listeners into. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I gotta be, oh, I, 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 I gotta be jacked up and ready to go. We yeah. were, what matter of fact, we were even talking about that. Um, we're going to talk about the scammer, the, the skimmers in a second, but yeah. we were even talking about that as far as like how we eat. Yeah. Like we're the exact opposite of how we eat. You eat all the time, a ton of calories and can't gain any weight. Yeah. And I eat like a fucking bird. Yeah. You're, you're this guy walking around with constantly. scoops of peanut butter and sticks of goddamn uh, yeah. asparagus. Yeah. Low, low sugar this. Crazy. No, no, Popsicles. No sugar this. Uh, a diet this. I diet would die. That, diet soda. Diet. Uh, yeah. I would be in the hospital in three days if I had if I ate what you ate. No, nah, it is. It's and the only thing I constantly consume that has a ton of calories is just coffee. Yeah. Like that's really it. It's coffee. Yeah. It's really my diet consists of of caffeine and uh, high protein. Like that's it. Anything else is low carb. Like no bread. No, you know, I mean, I very seldomly eat bread. Like, uh, unless you, like, you're shoving yeah. bread in my face. Come on, bro. You know, got some, <laughs> it's butter. It's good. Yeah. Other than someone taunting me with bread and, and and making me eat the bread, I typically on my own don't don't eat bread. Yeah, I um see where my my diet's probably sixty percent carbs. Oh, we went to Panera and you had like I'm, I didn't even know they had. It was basically the entire. It, it was almost a carb meal. Yeah. I mean, you actually ate bread with extra bread, and the bowl of food that you got was in a big thing of bread. Everything yeah. was bread. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd balloon up like— Really? Oh, I'd look oh, like— Oh, man. Yeah, that's— Somebody a, fat. I don't know. It's unfortunate, man. Whatever. Yeah, um, I've, you know, I've always been that way. I, I've, I can just pretty much eat whatever I want, whenever I want, and whatever quantity I want, and it doesn't really, doesn't really have too much of an effect on me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is Matt Cox. I hope you're enjoying the video. Wanted to let you guys know real quick that one of the ways I, I pay my bills is I do paintings. My paintings range anywhere from 800 bucks to a couple thousand, but I also have smaller paintings that I sell for $295, and that includes shipping. And I've got Marilyn Monroe, Bubblegum Girl, Biggie Smalls. I've even got some Trumps. I'm gonna leave my information in the description box and enjoy the rest of the video. I don't have that. I don't have that. But it's it's the same thing. You know what's funny? So that's the same way we approach scams. Yeah. Vastly different. Yeah. Where, where it's, it's you know, which is funny because it's the difference between, like, your eating habits. Your eating habits are excessive. Actually, it is kind of the same. Yours are excessive. Mine are conservative. Yeah. Same thing with the, with the scams. Yours are, you know, you do it in bulk. And you get the money right away, and it's but it's to me. It's I hit high them risk. hard, and I hit them fast. You're right. Right. The, the, what I do is way, way, way more of a high risk. Right. Where to situation. what I do yeah. was more. You of try a, and minimize the risk. Right. Yeah. Even if it takes longer. Yeah. If it takes yeah. longer, and so it's 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 quantity, it's quantity versus you know quality. Yeah. Uh, in a, in a way, and yet, 
you know, but then when you ultimately get caught, it's a vastly different sentence. Yes. You would think, well, you, I was so careful, but as a result of being so careful, I borrowed too much money and it was, and, and, and I went too long. So when the money piled up, I got a massive sentence, Yeah, you know, and you got lucky and didn't get a massive sentence. Yeah, I got very lucky. Uh, so you were saying, so t- what's going on with the uh, skimmers? You're, you're reading right. more and more articles. About- yeah. You know, I, um, you know, it seems like as when I was doing this, um, well, actually, I never actually want to, for the record, I never actually made skimmers or ATM skimmers or anything like that. But, uh, I obviously I did the research, um, you know, when right. I was poking the hornet's nest, uh, you know, when I first started and it was one of the things that I considered, but it was, there was so little information, uh, available, uh, online that I didn't really think I could actually, uh, you know, successfully pull it off. Like I just, there was, there weren't the resources weren't available. Um, you know, so, but n- whereas now I kind of feel like maybe once a month or, you know, fuck sometimes twice a month i'm I'm seeing new articles online where they're just finding these devices um obviously it's amateur hour but they're finding these devices on gas pumps they're finding them on uh you know in the store on the actual pos machines they're finding them on atm machines so people for people that don't know what a skimmer is uh a boy a skimming POS yeah machine. a pos machine is a point of sale um right the devices the, are yeah. in the gas stations or well, yeah, wherever you go to a wherever counter. you go to process you wherever you stick your credit card at when you go to walgreens walmart cvs any gas station it's you know it's yeah. the point of sale machine uh you know so th- that's that's the actual uh, point at which the thieves right you know place the device to piggyback on that to capture your card data and they um, used to be when when i was well 15 20 years ago when they were huge mm-hmm. people were making the devices putting them over there and they'd slide your card right this was before the chips yeah they you'd slide your card and it would gather the information but then your pin number mm-hmm. They had it. They would put like a camera, pinhole camera. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. little camera or something yeah. that would have to view your yes. you punching in your pin number. Yes, and that was the same thing when I when I back in the day when I was you know getting into it you know doing fraud and I was carding and stuff. Um, you know that was the only way to go. And you know, you know, believe me, I ordered pinhole cameras and I ordered all the components and I still couldn't really figure out how to make a passable device. You know, but now, but oh, now, yeah, like I said, there's just more resources available. You know, there's, there's, you've got 3D printers now. You know, so if I needed to, you know, design something that needed to catch or whatever that you know I couldn't find, now I can 3D print it at home for like three or four hundred dollars. You know, 3D printers are amazing. Yeah, you know, prototyping and you know, I could, like I said, I could 3D print a whole, a whole ATM uh, skimmer now with the whole fascia and everything at home. I could do it right at my desk. Did you ever Unfortunately, I just wasn't available in 2005, you know. So off topic, even though I we, we talked about staying on topic. Sure. But it's still 3D printer related. Sure. This is – did you ever see the kid – so there was a kid that was made – there were kids making – when the 3D printers first came out, they were making guns. Mm-hmm. So they were making guns that worked out of 3D printers. And then there was actually an article I read in on when I was in prison in Wired – Another thing that this kid did, which he had a he made a he mounted a gun on a uh, a drone. Did you ever see that? Yes. And he was able to have a remote where he was of firing the gun. Did you ever see this, Connor? That's that's relatively simple. That's just a couple of relays and uh, a solenoid. Yeah, bro. He was he had it mounted on the so he's actually shooting at a target with you know. Um, with a drone and a gun attached to it, pulling yeah. the trigger, and it's, it's just bam. Yeah. It would go bam, and, and then that's it'd, relatively bam. yeah, and that's relatively easy to do. Yeah. yeah, and then he he posted it, and it went viral, and then the ATF came and had a chit chat with him, and it told him to stop doing that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so the pre- three printers and and all the technology is just amazing. But now they're just you're able to just order it, and, and the thing is, the people guys in China, now you know, not China, but let, let's say uh. Um, South Korea, mm-hmm. they'll make almost anything for you and mass produce it. Well, yeah, they don't give a shit. There's yeah. no, yeah. You I, know. I got, a, I know a buddy that has like sunglasses and stuff made from manufacturers in China and yeah. and, and oh yeah, South Korea and yeah, the counterfeiting market. Uh, you know, in the in the Asian countries, they don't. There's no laws against that over there. Yeah, they, they don't give a less. shit. Yeah, there's no uh, FBI is not going to come to their building and, and close down their operation. It just doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. So. 
So what was the one uh, you read an article uh, like a couple weeks right, ago? Right, yeah. There was this uh, a, a girl in Texas. Um, I actually have the video. I mean, maybe we can maybe we can show the video real quick. Yeah, do you swiping your credit card? Something you probably do every single day without even really thinking much about it. But police in McKinney now are working to find out how many people had their information stolen by a credit card skimmer inside of a 7 Eleven. Tonight, CBS 11's JD Miles has the remarkable story of a woman who discovered this skimmer after she became a victim. Credit card skimmers account for a billion dollars in fraud each year in the U.S. When you see how well hidden the one found inside this store was, You'll understand why. It was a regular daily trip to this 7 Eleven on Medical Center Drive in McKinney for Nyjah Radler. I was just trying to get chips and a bottle of water. <laughs> she paid with a credit card as usual, but later noticed that her drink and soda cost her nearly $1,000. The 25 year old went back to the 7 Eleven where she last used the card and found out why. I'm like, hey, something happened with my car. Let me check the machine and see something. And I just literally lifted it up and it was there. She discovered a credit card skimmer that's now in the hands of McKinney police that's detectives. Perfect. Thanks that to Rattler's perfect. quick thinking, yeah, but look they are trying to it. determine who installed it and how many people hour. were victimized. So I think it's pretty smart of her to really sit yeah. down and think you, about listen, where you, the you walk right up, you can notice happened. it on there. There was Police gaps say all the around. It's made of a replacement cover likely purchased online by a criminal, outfitted with a computer board that can be accessed wirelessly and placed on top of the store's identical credit card reader. Corporal Melissa Taylor says the case is a good reminder to always perform a test before using an ATM, buying That's gas, in there, or making a purchase inside a store. These so, are double back taped on in most uh, cases. Yeah. So if you try it's, to pull the cover off hour. of the ATM, the, the keypad, the point that you put your credit card in, it's going to come off. The store's owner issued a statement which says 7-Eleven yeah, takes allegations the, to, involving to, credit to cards. To say that they didn't know that was seriously. on there is BS. 7-Eleven inspects yeah, here, gas I'll, pumps I'll and cars. Yeah, we don't, need, I, we don't yeah, need to watch that. Hi, my name is Juan Sanchez, and you know me from Matthew Cox podcast. I'm reaching out to you right now so you can go to his Patreon account and sponsor one of his three tiers he has. The first tier will give you a thank you text from him. The second tier will give you access to all of his videos, including the ones that I'm in, long length, full length, sorry. The third tier includes all of that, plus one of these wonderful collectible paintings. Listen, I know there is hungry children in Africa. I know there is people starving in South America. But we need to help Matthew Cox, his cause. Please support him. Go to Patreon and help him help me help you. Them covering their ass. But yeah, yeah, listen, you know, the, to say that the, the, the Hindu behind the counter at the 7-Eleven didn't, um, didn't, didn't see the, the skimmer come on. They look at those things every single day. Right. You could look down and see that there's gaps around the whole screen. If all they had on there was those little four pieces of tape, and you could look at the back of the skimmer and you could tell, I mean, clearly there's, a, there's something on top of it. So I, I'm more inclined to think that it was the person working at the 7-Eleven uh, who put it on there or the somebody knew the person. The person knew the person was like, yeah, come on up here and put that on there and we'll split all the profit or whatever. Right. In, I, in I, my opinion, that's that's probably what the scam was. Uh, I mean, I've gone to pumps, you know, before where I as soon as I pulled out my card and looked at it like it was so bulky and I was like. Man, I haven't seen anything this bulky in a mm -hmm. while. Like, this is pretty bulky, you mm -hmm. know? And my first thought was... But you've never tried to rip one off. No, I didn't. I didn't even touch it. Even though I looked at it and I yeah. thought, that looks really bulky. I still used it. I, I used it because I get push the notifications. Yeah. So as soon as I swipe my card, Yeah, but listen, it they could me. sit on that data for months. Right. And they could sit in a database and then they sell it to somebody else. They sell the dump to somebody else who then sits on it and then one day goes and uses it so you, so you know what's so funny so like this story makes the news mm -hmm. even though this stuff happens all the time but what when you were telling me about it that's what reminded me that's why stealing credit card information you know getting someone to to counterfeit the credit cards or putting the the, the information on the back of the uh of, of a a gift card or mm -hmm. whatever, and using that card, mm -hmm. like to me, that's what terrifies me. I, I would never do that. And we had this discussion, but I would never do that because to me, that's so risky. You're in the store using a card that's connected to somebody else's account, mm -hmm. and they may be notified. Right. And that's what reminded me, and 
that that reminded me of like that we were talking. I was like, that's yeah. the problem with that scam is it's the fly in the ointment. You know, if they're yeah. notified and if they end up taking action, as opposed to just calling the credit card company and canceling the account. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was talking about. Your, you know, and brother. your brother. Yeah, my little brother decided to uh, walk into a Target uh, one day and uh, use actually uh, he was using fraudulent dump information, uh, you know, which is the information that's encoded to the uh, magnetic strip in the back of the credit card. Okay. Now, that information that he was using was fraudulent, but he was using uh, what he had done was use his own driver's license and his own debit card, because in his mind. You know, uh, if I, if the name on the debit card matches the name on the driver's license, and these both of these pieces of um, are, you know, obviously not fraudulent. I mean, they're both. One was you know issued from a legitimate financial institution. Right. The other was issued from the DMV. So there's going to be no scrutiny there on the actual device on the actual devices that I'm using. You know, so there would be less scrutiny on the actual numbers that are being used, which was what he was doing. Which it's a kind of a good idea, you know what I mean? You just don't encode your name to the actual dump on the card, so that way when they swipe it, it's not saving your your name. You're just it's just a visual. You're just tricking them, pretty much. Okay. Do you understand how that kind of works? Yeah, I understand. I'm In just... theory. No, I I, okay. I understand. So that. anyway, so so as the story goes on, uh, my the 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 dump that they were actually using was like a local was attached to to a local person's bank account. Right. Which, I mean, I think they knew that they were using a local bank because that the bank that they were using, uh, I believe it was um, Huntington. It was a Huntington bank, which are only in like certain areas, I believe in Michigan and, and a few other states in the Midwest. Um, but I want to say it was like three or seven thousand, six or seven. It was between three and seven thousand dollars they had charged in the card throughout so the day. The, I have the thing from Huntington yeah. showing how much it was run up. Yeah, yeah. And um, so. The lady, you know, I guess checked her bank account or they called her. Yeah. They called her because it had been used so much. Right, and she uh, just pitched a fit, uh, and the bank was like, you know what, you know, we'll, we have to conduct an investigation. We'll get your money back, uh, and she just wasn't happy with that, right. you know. So she took it upon herself to actually call Target, or I mean, she may even drove she, down like, there. She actually she called them yeah. after they had surveillance film. Went down, met the met the sheriff down there. Wow. And they researched yeah. it, and that's when they went to the to the actual. Yeah. Uh, they went to the actual counter, and that's when they found out his name. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then it wasn't very hard to find him uh, after that. You know, they showed no, they up. they looked in the phone book. The, the, the sheriff, the deputy, looked in the phone book. The, li- was, the literal phone book? Well, I don't know if it was a phone book. Don't, he looked up that there was a guy. This wasn't the 90s. This no, was no, but, 2010. They don't, they, they, nobody, my brother wasn't in the phone book in no, 2010. I can tell you, he looked up the name on the card. And there was somebody that lived by that name that was only a few miles away. I don't right. know if it was a phone book, but wherever the cop looked it up, maybe it was the DMV. I'm but I remember pretty sure they did it, it by the license plate, didn't they? I don't know. I they got they got the license plate, and the license plate was registered to that address. So they just we went to that address. Account. Yeah, we well, actually, I, I actually you have, have, the have the paperwork. I have the paperwork. I, I bet I could find the paperwork in three minutes if you want to wait. Because I actually have the Huntington letter that Huntington said the exact amount that he ran it up. Because they drove to his house. Right. So I actually have the. But they got his license plate on camera at the Target. I don't remember the Because my little plate. brother didn't have his name, his driver's license registered to the address because they, he had just moved into that. As he had just, listen, the cops had just come looking for him in, in, in Coral Springs. And literally when the cops came to the door that day and, and were like, is Christopher Boziak here? And like it was early in the morning and his door was closed. His closet, his room door. I was like, no, it's just me. They're like, right. well, do you have ID? And I showed him my ID. And they're like, well, he's got a he's got an open arrest warrant, uh, arrest warrant for out for him. And I'm like, well, how is that? Because the bail bondsman called me and gave me back my money from because I bailed him out of jail because we had got chased out of a Walmart right, right. for using a fucking fraudulent credit card. Right. You know what I mean? And so when the cops came looking for him, he took off and went to Michigan like that night. On a, he took off and got on a plane and went to Michigan. And that's when he started doing the, the shit. So his he has, there was no way they could have tracked him to that address through his name. So the only way they could have gotten him was that license plate on Joseph Dickens' car was registered because that was his apartment. So then they fucking – they were like, okay. Then they went and sat and just – and just waited in the parking lot. My brother said he was walking out to the parking lot to get something out of his car. They recognized him. And grabbed him. And then they followed him back up to the apartment, and that's when they beat on the door. Right. And that's when they went into the apartment. And he still had all the stuff oh, they from Target. They had piles of debit cards, piles of fucking you know, gift cards. They had all the, would you call it, the swag? Yeah, yeah. They had their apartment full of swag. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, and that. 
and that's how he went to jail. My little brother went to jail, and 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 obviously that's when he completely stopped doing everything. Like after that whole kind of situation yeah, went he down, went he went to jail for like a year or so. No, no yeah. I don't know. It was about a year. It was yeah. it was a while. He was a few months in Michigan fighting the case, and then they had to extradite him all the way back down to Florida. Right. <laughs> Dude, my little brother is not like the jail guy. Right. You know what I mean? He's clean cut, super like proper, speaks proper. He's not you know a scumbag. You know, yeah. D's and A's and F's and B. All you know, he doesn't he doesn't really. You know, so for in my mind, for him to have to go through all that and then get extradited, and then I picked him up at a bus station down there, uh, I just seen how it changed him. Like he was just like in the moment, fuck. He's like, yeah. He's like, we were on the bus, and he's yeah. like, I was talking with this guy, and I was like, wow, man, that's yeah. I could never imagine him ever because now he's like a stand up guy, and he's like a software engineer, yeah. and he's you know married, and he's got kids. But yeah, it was it's very interesting to have to watch him kind of go through all of that. Yeah, they. I remember I read the uh, newspaper article about it. Remember they acted like it was this massive bust, uh, and they had like yeah. the credit cards spread out, and they had. Yeah, they had some detectives sitting at a desk like yeah, this, yeah. and all the credit cards spread out in front yeah. of them. They're like, take take this a photo. Of massive it. investigation where you okay, basically yeah. just looked up his name. Yeah, yeah, you guys, yeah, did yeah. your job. You yeah. guys did your job. But it was only good for you. So what I'm saying is, it was only because that victim that woman she was a fly in the she ointment. put up a stink. she put up she made yeah. she made started making phone calls and i want to know this and where's this yep. and where's that oh, and you've got footage call the sheriff and she's I'll like listen him. yeah 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 like she wanted she wasn't most people yeah. call their their uh their credit card company and they say hey that wasn't me and they reverse the charges and that's it yeah but she was yeah. she was adamant that she was going to catch the guy yeah yeah, you, you know, like it's just that always that one random anomaly that you can never really um, that you can never really account for. Right. Yeah, it's a bummer. So, and so that's the same thing with this woman and the skimmer. She went down and actually yanked the yanked the skimmer. Yeah, she could have just let it go and called her bank and been like, you know what? Um, what me. You know, this I didn't. You know, these charges aren't mine, and they would the bank would have reversed and they would have gave her money back, and that would have been it, and uh, the skimmer would still be in play. All right. Yeah, but like you said, the fly in the ointment. Yeah, there's and always one. That's that's the difference between like your, you know, your scam and and your credit card scam and the one that I was running was yeah. just I was you were getting real information, counterfeiting credit cards or putting them on the back of existing cards or whatever you were doing and going into an actual store where, to me, I was actually building a synthetic identity, and so I was actually getting, uh, I was actually getting social security numbers issued to me by social security. By going in with a, a birth certificate and a shot record for a child that was 10 or 11 months old, mm -hmm. and they would issue me a social security number, and I would then turn around, order secured credit cards in that child's name, which I'd say was a 30-year-old. You know, I didn't use the same. I didn't say it was a 10-month-old kid mm -hmm. when I applied. I said it was a 30-year-old man, and I would get the credit cards, and then I would just make the payments on the credit cards. So you give Bank of America. Two hundred dollars, and then somebody else five hundred and three hundred costs mm -hmm. about a thousand dollars. And every month I use them for thirty or forty bucks, and then I pay them off every month or pay them down. And really, that scam kind of runs itself because as long as you keep the balances below thirty percent, six months later you're going to have great credit scores. So six months later, I would have seven hundred credit scores. You know, you get like a six ninety five, seven ten, seven oh five, mm. and then I could turn around and I would apply for major credit cards or ask for cash advance or ask for um the balances to be raised and then i would go to uh not like banks but let's say um city financial or mm -hmm. american general or something and get a loan for fifty five hundred dollars or seventy five hundred dollars a personal loan yeah then i'd wait six months so now i've made about 15 grand so I, i'd go six months and then i'd go into Bank of America, South Trust Bank, or Sun Trust, or a credit union, or whatever, and I'd ask for a personal loan for fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, whatever they would offer, and they'd give, and I'd have to make a check. And by this point, I actually had a driver's license, which you can order on one of these Russian websites, like we were talking about, and you were saying, "Well, that's it's fifty fifty, it's hit or miss. Like you may get the, you may get it or you may not get it." I mean, I was actually going in the DMV mm -hmm. and getting them to issue me an ID. Because I'd make a birth certificate for on that Soch for the same name. Mm -hmm. I've got credit cards. And so I've got credit cards. I'd make a, a lease agreement. And I would 
make a birth certificate for a 30 year old man with almost the same. Like if I said the guy was born July 2nd, I would, you know, I would say, and he was, but he was really 10 months old. I'd say it was, he was born July 2nd, like 1970. So now he's like a 30 year old man at the time. Right. Make a birth certificate, go in the DMV, show a, a license, show my, sec- or show a, a lease agreement, or even register to vote in the guy's name. They'll issue a voter's registration to anybody in almost any name and use the social security card. So I've got a real social, I've got a fake birth certificate, and i got a real a registration mm-hmm. to vote, and they'd give me an ID. I'm not trying to get a driver's license, so then I could go and I'd open up a bank account. So when I'd go into the banks after a year, they'd give me 20000 or 15000 I'd go into three banks within the same day, get the money, to make the deposits. Then I'd borrow against the credit I Then I'd apply for major credit cards, and I'd get... $10,000, $5,000, $12,000. And then as you start applying, they start dropping. Next thing you know, they're 3000 Then it's not, then you get denied. Then I'd go to local department stores, you know, Dillard's, uh, whatever, you know, Macy's. You know, you get 1000 2000 here. Then you start getting denied. Mm-hmm. Then I'd go to Home Depot, get a Home Depot card, get a Lowe's card. Then next place you go, you get denied. So now I'm, I'm wiped out. But it ended up being like $100,000 worth of credit in one year. Mm-hmm. You do that with 10 guys, that's a million dollars. And then if you you pull out as much cash as you can, you deposit in the bank, you remove it from the bank, and I would make a few payments after that. Like mm-hmm. I didn't take out a $20,000 loan right. and not make any payments. Right. I'd make a few payments. Then they start sending in the collections, uh, the collection letters saying, hey, you're in collections. I'd write a letter back or I'd call them and say, look, I lost my job or I was in a car accident. Give them a reason for why I didn't pay and hold them off for a while. One time I actually went to actually went down to the bankruptcy court and got these letters that they tell you to send all your creditors. Mm. Mailed them to the creditors saying that I had a I was I was entering bankruptcy and I was going to have a a bankruptcy hearing like in 60 days. They just stopped. They stopped writing letters completely cuz they're not allowed to contact you anymore. But then eventually I just throw everything away and I walk away. You do that with 10 people, that's a million dollars. And the banks don't know they were scammed. Because the bank lent you twenty grand, they got two payments, and you got into a car accident, or you know you lost your job. When they really start investigating is when you borrow twenty grand and you never make a payment. Mm-hmm. Like that's an idiot. So my scam was a lot longer, but I felt it was safer because there was nobody out there looking for me. Nobody was. There was no fly in the ointment. Mm-hmm. It was a lot longer. It took a lot more. Patience and length, and you know, yeah. you, you said the other day that that I, you know they were to me. That's like a long con. Yeah, well, you know, um, it, see, the problem is with those long cons is you have to have something going on immediately to take care of your uh, bills and your immediate needs. Like, so, like a lot of people that do this, they don't have a year to wait to make right. to you know to do any of this because by then I've been fucking starved to death and I'll be evicted and living on the street. Yeah, you were. You know, so the difference between it's just it, it all boils down to the difference between the individuals that's actually right. committing. Well, uh, I actually had from, a job when we, yeah. we had talked about the, yeah. the fact that I had a, a regular job, like I owned the mortgage company. So I had a job that paid me it, decent money, but it wasn't meeting my, it wasn't the kind of money I wanted. And it seemed so safe. Like I was like, I'm constantly, back then I was constantly wondering, like, I wonder if I do this, if this work. I wonder, like it, it was almost mm-hmm. like it was just this overwhelming curiosity because I didn't need the money. I just wanted to see if it would work. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I was able to wait a long period of time where you were saying, like, you were getting the money. And then you were going out. You were buying Cadillacs and you're, you know, I, I mean, I know you had, like, a, a hundred pair of, like, Nikes or something. Three hundred. Three, like, I mean, just ridiculous. Like, I'm not spinning. It was just, you, you're the same way now. Like, we were constantly yeah. having this discussion yeah. where you're constantly, like, you know, blowing a bunch of money. And I'm, you know, you're yelling at me for not living. And I'm yelling yelling at you for living too well. Yeah. You know, what are you doing? Save that. Don't do this. Don't then you're yeah. saying, what are you doing? You're buying stuff on set. You're shopping at Ross. You know, yeah. you're, what are you doing? But I mean, you know, it's just a difference of opinion. Like, I don't yeah. feel like I, I don't feel like I am struggling. I don't feel like I'm not, I don't feel like I'm cheating myself, mm-hmm. but that's the difference in the mentality between yes. the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. And yet I spent so much more time in prison. Yeah. It's unfair. It is unfair. You really should have spent more time. Oh, I should have got three times the amount of time I got. Yeah, I should still be there right now. <laughs> yeah, that, but that you know that just that's my luck. 
uh, it's been my luck all throughout life. Yeah. Good times. Good, Good times. times. Hey, thanks for watching the Boziac Conundrum. And if, you, <laughs> and if you like the video, do me a favor and subscribe. Hit the like button. Share the video. And I appreciate Oh, by the way, when you subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications of videos like this. And I appreciate you watching. And check it out next time. See ya.